Welcome everyone. Welcome to episode two of my long dark tutorial. We're going to do, we're going to continue doing this tutorial on the game itself. Um, we're going to talk about the different nuances and the mechanics of the game and how things work. Um, there, are, of course, there are a lot of videos out there uh, explaining this, so feel free to check them out too. This is my explanation of how I think things work in the game. Um, these are the things that I learned as I was playing the game. I have a lot of hours in this game. I've been playing a, a, quite a long time. Of course, there's so many other people here have been playing as long as me. And um, feel free to check their videos out too, because between all of us, I'm sure you'll learn something from all of us. Anyway, today we're going to start working. We're going to I decided that I'm going to look at the map and the regions a little bit more. I'm going to explain some of the regions a little bit more detail for you because there are some regions that have certain things in them that you should maybe know about. And this possible there might be some spoilers, not really bad, but there's might be some spoilers. So just to, to warn you, if you don't want to hear any kind of spoilers in this video, then just, you know, you could fast forward if you want. Anyway, um, uh, I'm going to go over these locations a little bit, and I'm going to explain some nuances about these certain regions here. Let's start with some of the wildlife in the game. Okay, now there's bears, wolf, moose, wolves, rabbits in the game. Um, there is predators. The pre main predators are bears and wolves. Um, the moose can attack you. And if they attack you, they can certainly break your ribs. We'll go into inflictions and stuff in a future video as well. I want to talk about, you know, things like getting sick and how to how to heal yourself, what, what you have to do to um, survive. We're going to actually go through into that. We're going to do, we're going to start a run and we're going to go through all of that. Um, but first I want to explain a little bit about the regions. There are certain regions in this game that have... We'll start with the terrain. There are certain areas on these maps that have weak ice. Um, there's ice in this game that you can fall through and you can freeze or you can drown yourself. If you've fallen enough times, you actually you can actually drown and die. If you fall in it too much, you can freeze your clothes, you can freeze yourself, you can get hyperthermia and you can die. So I'm going to go over and explain some of the regions that have some specific dangers that you might want to look out for. So we're going to start here with this region here, Forlorn Muskeg, where my mouse is right here. This region has a lot of ice in it. It basically has the land mass that goes all the way around the lake like this. And with the train tracks go through the center, but you have all a land mass that goes all around the outside and all this icy lake has weak spots of ice. Okay. There's only really two regions in, in this in Great Bear Island that has weak ice, and one of them is Forlorn Muskeg and Bleak Inlet. Okay, these all have uh, weak ice areas, so be very careful when you go here. There's some weak ice in both of these areas. There's a big frozen lake here that you can walk around the edge of the land. So if you follow the edge of the land, you can actually make it across the lake without falling in. But if you go in towards the center or anywhere inside, you can fall in. Okay. There's also some weak ice in Desolation Point. If you go towards the water, um, you can certainly drown or you can fall in the ice. If you get too close to the water or where the ice line meets the water, you want to try to stay in far enough where you won't fall in. Okay, uh, Coastal Highway has the same situation. Uh, when you're too close to the river, at river's edge, uh, the water, you can fall in. Uh, so just those are the things you need to look out for. There, most every region here has bears, has all the wildlife. Um, there are a couple places do, that do not have any wildlife. One of them in particular is called Ravine. Now, this is not really a region, it's a transition zone. So, in between the regions, there's either like a cave or there's another small little um, area that we call transition zones that will take you from one place to the other. So, like, there is a transition zone called Ravine that goes, separates Coastal Highway and Mystery Lake. So, if you follow these tracks, you can get through all these locations. 
there are breaks in the tracks. Sometimes there's collapsed uh, areas. You have to kind of climb over them or you have to go around them to get around them. But this track is a very long track and goes all the way from Broken Railroad to Coastal Highway. Okay. Now, Mystery Lake is considered a central region. It connects to mo almost everything. So you can get to this side of the map and this side of the map through Mystery Lake, uh, which is the reason why it was probably one of the first regions to put in that had the train tracks. They figured you can connect different regions through this train track. Okay. Um, let me see what else I can go over. There's certain areas here that different kinds of wildlife. For one, the wolves are different in some regions than others. All these regions here that are considered the older regions, Hush River Valley, Mountain Town, Broken Railroad, Former Muskeg, Mystery Lake, all have the general, normal black wolves that are in the game. There are certain regions that have a new breed of wolf, which really is not that new because it came out when Bleakin that came out is the Timberwolves. There are two regions right now in this game that have Timberwolves. One of them is Black Rock. And the other one is Bleak Inlet. So if you go there, uh, you're going to encounter different types of wolves there. In Black Rock, you're going to encounter black wolves and timber wolves. They're both together in Black Rock. And in Bleak Inlet, it's only timber wolves only. Um, almost every main region has bear spawns. Um, of course, like I said, Ravine is the only uh, region that doesn't have any predators. They have deer and rabbits there. That's it. No predators in Ravine. So... We call this, in the, in the Long Dark community, we call this the TLD Hospital. Uh, so basically, you can come here and recover your condition. You can hunt the deer and rabbits that are here without any fear of being attacked or anything like that. So Ravine is kind of a place of respite. Um, if you're traveling from region to region, uh, you could stop here and recover your condition. It's a really nice place. It's very, very serene. It's the only place that does not have predators every other place here does okay uh, i think i covered most of the basic stuff that i want to go over on the map so what we're going to do today is we're going to continue on i'm going to go cover some of the uh interface um of the game now because i can't move my mouse on the screen uh, i'll have to tell you where to look to direct uh your attention Okay, so we're going to start on the lower left corner. That is the HUD. Okay, that is your lifeline. Anything that's in this HUD is basically your lifeline. That is your survival. If any of these meters get red, you'll start losing condition. And I'll explain what each of these meters do. And I'll, I'll also explain how condition works in this game. Okay, it's pretty important that people understand that this game is also very time-based. So everything you do in this game requires time. And I'll explain that as we go, make it a little bit more clear for you to understand. Okay, so we're going to go over to meters on the lower left. The first one on the far left is your temperature meter. That is your most important meter in this game because this game... Aside from the predators, we'll talk about those later, but aside from just the environment itself, cold is the biggest killer in this game. Okay, You lose the most condition when you're freezing in this game than any other thing at all. As a matter of fact, I think if I, somebody, I think if I remember correctly, I believe it's 8% per hour, and I believe the, the sleep and the water is 4, and I think the hunger is 2. But... I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's how it is. Um, so cold in this game, you could lose up to 8% condition per hour as you're freezing and get hyperthermia, and then you'll start losing it a lot faster. So it's very important to keep these meters in the white. Your condition bar, I'll explain how that works too. Um, your condition on the bar, the bottom bar with the heart next to the left is your condition if that bar goes down to the bottom close to the heart you'll get a heartbeat it'll turn red that means you're about to die and you need to do something to get your condition back otherwise as i explained before this game is permadeath so if you die it's run over so if if you're one of those people that can get three four five six seven eight nine a thousand days nine hundred thousand days um, 
and if you make them if you make a wrong decision and you die all that progress is gone you cannot reload your game in survival mode <clears throat> just want to make that clear so it's very important that you really try not to freeze in this game now this is really important in the higher levels you talk about stalker interloper where it's really really cold um pilgrim and voyager is much more um forgiving about the environment um, the predators are still dangerous, but the environment is a little bit more forgiving. So moving right along, I'm going to show you some of the menu screens that you can encounter in the game. And I'll explain a little bit about how those work. Okay, so if you open up, we're going to open up our stats screen first. Now, uh, I believe it's the F key. I don't think I changed any of the key bindings except maybe one of them. But whatever your key binding is... Just press it. I believe by default it's the F key. Okay, I'm going to show you what the stats screen actually is. I'm going to go through and explain everything in here. Okay, this icon right here means I have no affliction. So if you have frostbite or if you have hyperthermia or if you have some kind of a sickness, uh, it will show here in this list what you have wrong with you. You can get sprained ankles, sprained wrists, you can get burns, you can get hyperthermia, you can get cabin fever, you can get um, parasites. Yes, you can get parasites in this game from eating raw meat. You can get, um, you can get sick from eating bad food. So I'm going to explain all those things and all how to fix those ailments in the upcoming videos. So we're going to start on the left side of the screen. And this is just a bigger representation of the HUD that was in the main screen. It just shows a bigger representation of it. This shows your current calorie count. It's very important that you keep an eye on this calorie count because if you sleep and not drink or eat, and if these meters go red while you sleep, you can lose condition, right? This is your condition bar, your overall condition. Okay. So remember that when you sleep your meters will go down and if your meters turn red while you sleep you can lose condition now remember when you sleep you can't abort a sleep so if you accidentally so if you're if you're let's say you're thirsty if your meter is over here and you sleep for eight hours you're going basically going seven hours without drinking and that could bring your condition way down Okay, so you have to keep that in mind whenever you sleep in this game to try to remember to eat and drink before you sleep. That's very important. Okay, and also make sure that you're not freezing when you sleep because you can freeze to death in this game too while sleeping. And if you're freezing and you're not warm enough and you sleep, you can die from hyperthermia in your sleep. So always want to make sure your meters are good before you do any kind of sleeping or any kind of crafting or passing time because this game is very time sensitive okay last but not least we're going to go down the bottom screen here on the left this is your overall temperature what it feels like outside and what your clothing bonus gives you okay so feels like is your what you feel like with all your clothes on and everything. So if it's 1C right now in the in this cabin I'm at, with the clothes I'm wearing, uh, it's actually 5C. So it's very important when you're dealing with clothing, and I'll go over clothing, because clothing is also a big confusion for some people on how clothing works in this game, okay? So I'll explain that too when we get to it, which we will soon, okay? So always remember that this is an indicator of if you're freezing or not. So if you're if you're ready to sleep and this meter is in the red, you need to be really careful that you don't freeze while you sleep. Okay? So we're going to go into the next screen now, which is um, we'll go into the uh, into the main screen by pushing your inventory key. Okay? You can come to this screen right here. Okay, this is your inventory screen. This is a lot to explain, and I'm going to go through all of this with you because some people still don't get it. Um, like I tried to explain to them in their stream, like push this icon, and they're like, what icon? Where? I don't see it. So I'm going to explain to you how these work, this interface is. Okay, up on the top here, you have all your categories. The one on the left is your is your stat screen. Look what I showed you before. You can get here every quick keys or through this menu. 
This shows your clothing screen. I'm going to explain the, how the clothing screen works. Okay. Just like in real life, you have an inner layer of clothing and an outer layer of clothing. So if you're going out in the middle of the winter time, you're going to put a, a, you know, a sweater on and then you're going to put a coat on over it, right? That's usually how you dress. So this game actually does it that way too. There's an inside column you see here and there's an outside column. The inside column represents your inside layer and the outside column represents your outside layer. There's certain clothing that works better on the inside than it does on the outside. And I'll explain how that works in a minute. Because <laughs> that's, that's quite extensive. But what I'm going to explain to you now is that your gloves and boots can only have one slot, obviously, because usually you don't wear two pairs of boots. And you usually can't wear two pairs of mittens either or gloves, right? But everything else you wear two, two pairs. These two slots are reserved for accessories. Accessories, and I'll go over those later too, are ear wraps and crampons and a moose satchel that you can wear uh, to increase your carrying capacity. Okay, so now that we went over through this part of the screen, I'm going to go talk about this a little bit. Okay, when you find clothing or you craft clothing in the game, they all carry a condition and stats value. So I'm going to go over these with you in a few minutes. Actually, I'm going to do it right now because it'd be a lot easier to explain the next thing as I go. Okay. The meter on the left explains the warming protection you get from that piece of clothing. So this one will give you a 0.4 C warmth bonus by wearing this. Okay. This one means windproof. Actually, you can hover over it. It shows you. This is the windproofness, right? So... Generally, things that have a high windproofness and a wetproofness, which is what this is, how, how waterproof is this piece of clothing? Now, remember, wool. Wool is warm even when it's wet, right? So, wool is always good worn, is always going to be have a good wet protection to it. Okay? This is your protection here against uh, predator attacks or against... Let's say, for instance, um, you slip and fall and you tear your clothing and things like that. This, this offers uh, protection against you so you don't hurt yourself, right, kind of thing. So this is, this is the overall protection of attacks or any kind of damage that you might take in your journeys. This one is a sprint. So each, certain pieces of clothing take sprint from you. So um, if... Uh, if you take too much sprit from your clothing, your meter over here, which is your on the right, lower right, you see my stamina meter. That red bar represents loss of stamina. The clothes I wear, the more stamina it's going to take from me. That red bar is going to get bigger and bigger, and I'm not going to be able to sprint as far as it would be if it was all white. Okay? We're going to go back to the screen again. Okay, this over here, when you add, put clothes on your body, this will change. So it's good to, if you want to find out what works best on your body, you can put it on and see what the results are right here if you want. If it's either going to subtract anything or add anything, it'll tell you right here. Okay, we're going to go over the bottom two numbers, which are pretty important. The one on the left here is the condition. Now, I mentioned in last video, each item in this game has condition. So, through time, all the items will decay. And when it reaches zero, it'll be ruined and you can't use it anymore. Okay? So, this one right now has a, has a decay of 37%. So, it, it's in the yellow, meaning that it's about ready to be ruined. If I don't fix it soon, it's going to get ruined. Okay, this one is a 52%. So when it's usually up about up above 35, it'll start turning white. Okay, these are 23%. These need to be repaired. Now, when you repair clothing, and this is very important to understand because I've seen people struggle with this a little bit. They're comparing clothing. 
when you compare clothing, to, let me see if I have something that I could show you. Okay, here, we'll show you like this with these two pairs of gloves. When you scroll through, you'll see different values here for each different pair of gloves, okay? So, what you need to do is when you're comparing, don't look at them as they are currently. Look at them as if they're the same percent of condition. So in other words, this one is 78% condition. It has a higher, as you're, the higher the condition uh, item is, the more protection it will give you here, okay? So when you're comparing clothing, try to look at it as not as it is currently, because you might sit there and say, oh, these gloves are only 0.3 and these are 0.8. I'm gonna wear these. But in reality, when these are up to 100%, they're way warmer than these, okay? These are ski gloves. So try to keep that in mind when you're when you're comparing clothing. Try to look at it as as if it was 100%. Okay, so as 100%, this might change to 0.1 instead of 0.5, right? It might go up to 0.7 or 0.8 from 91%. So you have to kind of look at it like that when you're comparing clothing. Don't forget that, okay? All right. So we're going to move on to the next screen. This is your inventory. We're going to go over this a little bit too. These um, things on the left are your categories that you can sort your items. The, ca the items in your inventory are sorted by these categories. In other words, the first one is everything. You see it says here all. This one is your fire starting. This one is your first aid, clothing, food and drink, tools, and materials. Anything that has to do with crafting or bandages or anything that will show up in materials will also show up here. Okay. So anything that you can craft with will end up in this area. So you can craft with this reclaimed wood. You can make a snare with this if you like. That's why it's in the, in the crafting area or material area. You can craft tinder plugs with sticks which is why it's in this area. You can craft things with this metal scrap, which is why in this area, okay? That's what the material section means. This is all your fire starting stuff. Your newspaper, mag lens, you know, your wood, coal. If I had any coal, it would show up in here too, okay? Now I'm gonna show you, since we're here, I'm gonna show you the condition of your items also show up here too. So it's very important to keep up with your with your clothing because as you go and if you get attacked by predators will also take down the condition of your clothing. So will blizzards, heavy wind, water, things like that will also bring down your condition of your clothing. So you have to keep in mind that you should repair your clothing if it gets below 80%. That's just kind of my general rule. Everybody's different. Some people do 90. I think 80% is good enough. You can probably get by with 80%. Anything below that should be repaired. Okay, food. There's so many different kinds of food in this game. Um, and some foods are different than others. And some foods don't appear in higher difficulties, like this particular item. All right, this is an MRE, 1,750 calories it gives you when you eat it. However, this does not show up in Interloper. So in certain difficulties, you won't get certain foods. But right now I'm playing Pilgrim, so I'll actually get that, get one of these. Okay, um, I'm going to explain to you about how water works in this game. Too. Well, actually, let me show you later because there's a process you have to do when you make water. So I think when we get into doing the actual run, I'll explain how a little bit how cooking works, how you start fires, because I've seen beginners struggle how to how to light a fire. They don't even know how to. And I'm going to show you how you normally start a fire. There's a couple of different ways you can do it, and I'll go through that in a little bit, probably in the next video when I go over oh, doing an actual run. Okay. This is your tools. I'm going to show you some of these tools. You do get guns in this game. There's a rifle and a revolver. Now, you don't get these in Interloper. You don't get a bedroll in Interloper. So, in other words, this bedroll allow you to sleep, you know, outside of a cabin. You could sleep in caves or what have you with a bedroll. But you don't spawn with one of these in Interloper. 
so you have to actually find one. You can't craft them. You cannot craft bedrolls in this game. I wish you could, but you can't. So you have to find them. Okay. Um, you get different tools. You get hunting knives. You get hatchets. You get heavy hammers. Um, things like that. I'll explain all that later as we go. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a run. And I'm going to do a tutorial run. And I'm going to explain how things work as we go. Okay. Last but not least, we're going to go over these one more time. Remember, this is all your crafting. This is cloth. This is what you need for repairing your clothing. There are other things you need, might need, depending on the clothing. Because you can make animal clothing, deer, wolf, and bear, and moose clothing, and rabbits you can make in this game. And to repair those, you usually need a piece of whatever it's made out of. So if, if it's a rabbit hat, if to repair it, you'll need a piece of rabbit pelt to fix it. Okay, But this is to fix your regular clothing with a piece of cloth. Okay, we're going to go into the next screen. The next screen is your forging screen or your blueprints for crafting. This is quite extensive and I probably won't go through everything, but I'm going to go through some of the basics of this screen because a lot of people don't understand this screen. Beginners usually don't, they don't quite get how crafting works. Um, so we're, I'm going to go over that right now. Okay, so... As everything else, it's categorized by by item. Okay, now what? Let's say for to, for instance, you want to craft a particular item. You see, so you select it, and it'll tell you over here what you need to craft the item. It's the requirements. So you need two cured deer hides, four cured guts, and a workbench. And over here, you can use different tools. Different tools give you different time results. Of how long it takes to craft so make sure you select the right tool for the crafting job some crafting requires a knife some crafting requires a sewing kit some crafters some crafting requires tools so it, uh, simple tools or quality tools and we'll get into those later too okay so make sure you select the right tool to get the lowest time to do that crafting okay because remember time uses calories it also you loses sleep you also can get cold if you're cold and you waste time crafting um, you can get cold and you can get hyperthermia okay or you can get a risk at least okay so here's all the these are all the uh, animal clothing you can make and other kinds of clothing you can make if you don't have a hat or a gloves you can make improvised ones you just need cloth and a sewing kit and you can craft these right there's a bear coat deer skin boots deer skin pants you can make all of these items rabbit skin hat and mitts these are all great they also have very good warming values and they're much better late game when it gets really cold you're going to want to craft all of these if you can wolf skin coats okay all right i think we covered this screen for the most part I think we can cover it later once we start our run I'll cover how we do crafting and forging okay the next one is our log okay now this one is set to show you now there's some misconception about how the log and the journal works in this game too which is here all right I'll show you this some other time it's better to show you during the game too. this too but now the days here will show you different see how this starts at zero and this starts at day one so the journal always starts at day zero so right now I I survived zero days however this shows me that I'm on day one so I'm, so the log shows you your current day you're on but the journal will show you how many days you actually survived Okay, so the journal will always be a day or two behind the log. So just keep that in mind. And you're wondering why why this one says one and the journal says zero. That's the reason for it. Um, the journal lists the days survived. Right now, I just started to run, so I haven't survived any days yet. I just started a new run and started the video. Okay? Um, and the log will always say, like, hey, I'm on day one. When... I make date when I finish day one this will start to say day two and so on and so forth okay um, different sections of these I'm going to explain 
how skills work in this game. Very, very important aspect of this game is your skills. The higher your skills, well, in a lot of games too. There's a lot of games like that, like character building. The higher your skills are, the better you are at doing things. So what you want to do is you want, there's different skill levels for carcass harvesting, cooking, fire starting, ice fishing, rifle, archery, mending, revolver, and gunsmithing. You can make ammo in this game. We'll cover that, all of this in later videos. Don't worry about it. Uh, you'll eventually, I'll eventually cover it. Um, so, it, these, the skills all go up to level 5. So, the highest level you can get on a skill is level 5. You start on level 1, obviously. And you build up to level 5. And the higher your skills are, the better you'll get at things. So, I'll explain how things go as we progress in the run as well. Okay? This one is your map. Now, you notice it's blank. It's black, right? Why do I not have a map? Well, in this game, you, it, aside from story mode, um, this is just survival mode. Story mode, you do get a map. But in story mode, you're not provided a map. So, in order to get a map, you have to make your own using charcoal from fires. Now, we're going to go through all of that, too. Don't worry. I'm going to try to cover every single aspect of this game as much as I can as we go with the run. Some things it's just easier to explain while I'm doing the run itself, okay? But just bear in mind that you have to draw your own map and I'll show you how we do that. Okay, so right now it's very dark because <laughs> I did a lot of talking. But what I think I might do is from, I think from now on, I think I've explained most of the, the menus and things for now. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to end this episode. I'm going to sleep uh, and get daylight out. And we're going to start a new run. But we're going to start one with Predators. So we're going to, probably going to do a Voyager run to show you how to deal, how we deal with wolves, how we deal with Predators, how we deal with the environment when it gets cold, um, how we work with teas, how we work with sickness and all that. We're going to cover all of that. Um, in future videos. I hope you stick around and I hope you're you enjoying this so far. Um, I'm not an expert content creator, so I'm just putting these together raw um, just to try to help help new players out. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate all you very much and take care and see you next time. Bye bye.